Okay, so today we're looking at flowcharts. A quick starter activity, I want you to look at this flowchart and work out which number will reach the stop point at the end the fastest. What I mean by that is how many times, so for example, if we just use number six as an example, so think of a number greater than five, write the number six down, is it even? Yes. Divide the number by two, which is three at this point, is the number one? No. Nope. So we go back around the program and we'll follow that with the number three this time around and so forth until we get to a point where the number is one. So what you're going to do is see which number gets to the stop point the fastest. So you might need to trial and error uh, and go through this a couple of times. I'll pause and give you a chance to pause the video to work through that. Okay, so specification content then. So uh, this is probably going to span over a couple of lessons because we're going to be looking at one small part of this. We want to be able to identify inputs, processes, and outputs for a problem. We want to structure diagrams, create, interpret, correct, complete, and refine algorithms using pseudocode, flowcharts, reference language, and high-level programming languages. But we're going to start by looking at flowcharts today. The requirements then, so we're looking at the structure of a problem and the subsections that link their other subsections. And that'll make a little bit more sense as we go through this presentation. So first of all then, a flowchart. So a flowchart is a diagrammatic way of showing a computer's program. So just as you saw in the starter activity, we've got uh, boxes that represent instructions taking place on our computer. And there's different boxes for different things, and we'll look at those in a bit more detail. But ultimately, the flowchart demonstrates the sequence in which a pro uh, program runs in order to solve a problem, so to speak. So here's an example flowchart. So on the left hand side, you can see this is an example of a flowchart that's used to fill a bath. So you've got some simple instructions. So turning the taps on, see how much water's in the bath. You've then got this, is the bath full? And notice that there's a yes and no option. If it's not full enough, then obviously it'll continue and you'll keep going until you see if the bath has enough water in. Once the bath is full enough, we go through the yes uh, line then we'll turn the taps off. Okay, it's quite straightforward, but it's kind of worthwhile commenting at this point that each of these sort of different shaped symbols has a meaning. And it's important that we understand what those meanings are because they have a significant impact on what our program is doing. So we're gonna go through each of these symbols. And there are some more symbols than what is just simply on this example. So the first one then, this sort of oval sort of shape, this is what's referred to as our terminal. You might hear it referred to as a terminator as well. And it simply signals the start and the end point of your flowchart. So every flowchart must have a singular start point, but it might well be that you have multiple endpoints. And it might even be in some scenarios, you don't have any end point because they continue infinitely. We'll look at some examples of these. The line, now you'll notice the line will have an arrow. So in all flowcharts, you should see an arrow which shows and highlights the direction in which data is moving around the program. And this is important because this shows us the flow or the sequence of our program. This rectangular box then is process. Now this is where something's happening in our program. This might be something that's hard coded, an instruction that was carried out based upon what else is happening in the program or based on some values or so forth, but it's something that your program will automatically do. This doesn't require any user control. Then you've got decisions. Now decisions are these diamond shaped boxes and you saw that on the example where we were checking to see if the bath had enough water in it. Now what you'll notice with the decisions is that they're simply yes, no questions. And these, when you're writing code, will be represented by if statements. So if something is true or false or yes or no, then it will action either one of two things. So it's worth noting at this point, you can't simply ask what's your favorite flavor of ice cream or what's your favorite color or anything like that. You'd have to do it as a series of questions. So if we were to wanted to know what someone's favorite color is, we might have to ask, is your favorite color blue? Yes or no? With no then being, is your favorite color yellow? And then no, is your favorite color pink? And so forth. That is the way that you'd be able to ask kind of a stack of questions rather than having an open-ended. There should never be a situation where your decision block will have more than two outputs or should always only have two outputs, a yes and a no or true and false. You've get, then got this shape. This is the input and output. This is where the user might actually put some data into the program or equally may receive some data out of the program. So this might be something like printing on screen an answer to a sum, for example, or inputting those numbers for the sum. And then sub programs. Sub programs is uh, probably the more challenging of the shapes to kind of get your head around. And it looks like a square with two sort of um, borders at the end. So what a subprogram does is it effectively runs a sort of secondary flowchart or a mini program that might be used for a number of times in, in an application. 
And I'll show you an example of this as well. So here we have an example of a sub program. So the first thing to mention is that you've got kind of two flow charts here. Now the flow chart on the left where it says start and then is the sun off? And then we've got that yes, no coming over there. This is our main program. On the right where it says sub flash, this is where our sub process starts. So where it says sub flash is actually the start of our sub program. So to run this through then, if we start our start symbol, we move to see is the sun off? So what we're saying is, is it daylight? If it is daylight uh, or if the sun is off and it's dark, we go yes and we turn the lights on and then we go into our sub program. If it's not off, so if it's daylight, our lights stay off. And this is a continual and repetitive process. But if we are going through the route of yes and turning our lights on as some human interaction there, so the output being the, the light is on, we'll then hit this sub program. So this sub flash. Now, when we get to this sub program, this su uh, block here, this block represents this entire flow chart here, this entire sub program. So this sub flash, when our flow chart hits this block, goes to the start of this mini flow chart where it says sub flash, and we'll run through this process. So we've got turning our lamp on, delay, so waiting one second, turn the lamp off, delay one second. So it'll flash it on then off. This will then repeat that whole process over and over and over again infinitely. So notice there's no end point to our main flow chart. There is to our sub program. When our sub program finishes, it jumps back to the main uh, flow chart. But it'll be a case that as we go back round, is the sun off? Let's assume the sun is still off. Therefore, the lights get turned on and we rerun our sub program. So every time we hit this block, we run our sub program.